Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. One thing you notice when you visit Italy, particularly a small town, is that often there are cats and dogs on the streets. In that regard, it's very different from Australia, where you hardly ever see one, and where in some cities, for example like Canberra, by law, you have to dissect your pet if you're not planning on breeding, and if you are, you require a permit. Hello, puss puss. Here things are the opposite. Household animals, just dogs and cats, roam the streets. Some have owners, some don't, and it's very difficult to determine which ones are the ones who have a cozy place to go back to at the end of the day, and which ones push, push. will keep hanging around. You're being a cutie. You're pregnant, boo boo. That's a nice spot. Even if you ask, you may never get a straight answer. There were a few dogs in our town who we assumed were street dogs only to find out that they indeed had owners. Having an owner though and having a home are two different things. Okay, you remember us? When we arrived to Italy, even back in Abruzzo, in the small village we lived in, there were three or four dogs that seemed to not have a home. However, they seemed to have been fed. One was very, very shy. People called him Orso. We were never able to get close enough. We left food many times out for him, but as he started eating, any little noise will scare him off and he will go away. We were hoping that over time we could gain his trust, but we moved from the village before that could happen. When we arrived to our town in Molise, it wasn't any different. First, we met two inseparable dogs that people called Nero and Bianco. These dogs were so sweet. They were biggish, particularly Bianco as he was a Marema sheepdog. They used to hang around with us and come over for a walk as we went to the bakery or walked Georgie. It was so special to receive love from these doggies so quickly. Wherever they saw us, they would run towards us. We made sure we had water out for them and some food. A particular neighbor didn't like it. But, what the heck? I didn't move from a country where I will have to sign up for a course and get a police check just to be able to help an animal and arrived in a country where the animals themselves are in front of me asking to be acknowledged and help and not do it. I can do a lot of things, but looking away is not one of them. After a few months, Bianco and Nero were nowhere to be seen. Those who thought to know something about it said that they were taken to the pound as one of them had beaten someone, which I hardly believe. They were just two happy-go-lucky dogs and were liked by most people. However, just like anywhere else in the world, there is always the dickhead, pardon my French, that can't stand animals. Hey, <laughs> boy. 
beautiful. Then there were Ghost and Chico. For a long time, everyone who helped them out, including us, thought they didn't have owners, but they did. It was very strange because they stayed out day and night and at varied points got very skinny. Luckily, there were quite a few angels in town who did everything they could to make their lives a lot better. <laughs> what are you doing? You want cuddles? Cuddles. We named Ghost Ghost because he would appear and then disappear. He was very shy and as soon as we tried to come closer, he will go away. That first time that he let me touch his head a little was amazing. I was so grateful that we had started to gain his trust. So much so that after a while, even Aiden could give him a hug and Georgie could play with him. Ghost used to hang with Bianco and Nero, but will never go to the middle of town. He used to stop, turn around and go back to where he came from. Perhaps that is why he wasn't taken to the pound with Nero and Bianco. We even considered bringing Ghost into our home. We had no idea how and if he would adapt to a life of being an inside dog. But nevertheless, we thought we should try. We thought that perhaps when the back fence was done, that would be a good time. Quickly after Nero and Bianco though, Chico came into the picture and became Ghost's best buddy. They became inseparable and Ghost was Chico's protector. You couldn't take one without taking the other. You could not break that bond. Chico was hilarious. He behaved like a toddler and everything he did cracked us up. Chico and Ghost continued to be helped by people like us who thought they were homeless. In the end, they may as well have been. <laughs> you gorgeous boy. Come over here. Come on, you two. One day we noticed that we hadn't seen Ghost or Chico for quite a while. Ghost wasn't at his usual spots and Chico wouldn't come running up the hill when he heard us coming. Georgie would stop at one of the intersections just to stay there and look around for them. We started to get worried. One day, one of the beautiful ladies who fed Ghost approached us at the bar and told us that Ghost had been poisoned and passed away. Who in the world would do such thing? He was an angel and always kept to himself. From there on, we hardly saw Chico. One day, we drove past nearby a farm and saw him there. He recognized us and I knew immediately that it was him because he has a heart-shaped nose. It seems as if his owner had taken him there. Perhaps after what happened to Ghost, his owner got scared. What are you doing, Bibbles? What are you doing, cutie? With your tail. In the summer of 2022, I came across a kitten I named Pebbles. 
Some kids had brought her to our town after finding her on the beach at Termoli by herself. Funnily enough, I named her Pebbles, Pebbles. before Pebbles. knowing her story. These kids were hoping someone would take her, but as no one did, they kind of just left her in a spot near our house and I started feeding her and trying to see who could take her in, or at least help her grow stronger until she found a pack to hang with. There. Let's put the little books there. That should be warmer. And she ate everything. I she's chasing a fly. See you later. My beautiful. <laughs> Bye, Pebbles. After taking care of Pebbles for a few days, one morning I went to feed her and she wasn't there, and no one knew what had happened. All I can hope for is that someone saw her and took her in. He left. It's okay, cuties. Don't get close. Don't wanna bother them. Don't Aww. get wet. Don't get wet there. She's got a beautiful well. See. I hope it's a bit warm there, boobies. Love you. Bye. Where is Orange Boy? You right? I hope you're comfortable. As this was happening, Luna and Red, who most of you will be familiar with, were hanging around our house. Our kind neighbor told me that someone had left them and moved to another country. And since then, they had started hanging around with her cats, who are very much loved and taken care of. She cooks for her cats three times a day, and after hanging outside for most of the day, they come inside to their own area. Luna, Luna, 
Pus, pus, pus. Luna. Hello, you two. Look at them. Hey, good morning. Come on. Come on, you two. Come on. Where did you sleep last night? Huh? It has been windy. And here is the reason that prompted me to make this video and I am so sorry it is a sad one Luna is no longer with us I don't want to give details of what happened because I want this video to preserve the priceless memories we have of her time with us but as I know you will care I will give you more details in the description Luna, don't scratch me. It has been three days since Luna is not here, and the void is immense. We knew we loved her. We knew we were blessed with her love and attention but we never imagined that the silence of her absence could be so deafening. I still expect to call her out and hear her answer. I still feel like calling out from the balcony. Luna, I love you! And have her jump over the gate. Luna! Is that Luna? Hey, Loonies! Loonies! Hello, girl! I'm coming, boo! Her personality filled all the spaces we had to give to her. The terrace, the spot under the wooden cover, the garden, and the special spot under the fig tree where she would sleep for hours in a summer afternoon.
So, this is the sad story of street animals in Italy. Or anywhere, for that matter. They will be there. Unless we have a highly sanitized society. They will be there, waiting for someone to look at them and acknowledge their existence. They will be there. Ready to take your heart and give you theirs, if you allow it. Some may think that this is too sad, that it is better not to get involved so as to not to get hurt. And maybe you're right. But the transformation you go through, right to the smallest fibers of your heart that you experience after loving and being loved, no other experience can give you. You like the tulip? You like the tulip, Luna? <laughs> Thank you.